From being an international bogeyman who once cheerfully mixed menace and tyranny with his own version of knockabout farce, Idi Amin made himself invisible. The once garrulous British Army Sergeant Major shut up and vanished into the protective folds of his Arab allies. His presence here is supposed to be secret. These were the last pictures taken of him more than 18 months ago, during the early phase of his disastrous war against the Tanzanian army. From Uganda, he fled to Libya and then moved to another Arab country. I found Idi Amin, Big Daddy as he still likes to be called, living quietly in a brand new house that has been given to him. With him are one of his wives and 25 of his children. Ignominious defeat has treated him kindly. He's bursting with vitality. I am fresh, strong, and I am concerned with the situation in Uganda. But are you keeping track of the situation all the time? How do you manage that thousands of miles away? I have all Ugandans at heart and they keep me informed and uh, all Ugandans except the only few uh, might be opposing me but uh, most of them they love me they pass their information to me and uh, they want me uh, to save them from the chaos situation which is now happening in Uganda. When you left Uganda last year, did you manage to bring out a lot of money? Are you one of these rich leaders who've gone into exile? No, I am not rich. I am one of the poor leader in the world and uh, my intention is to work for my people, but not for me. Uh, that is the reason why uh, you know that if you check all banks all over the world, in Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in the United States of America, you will never find account belong to me because I work for the people of Uganda. I am a founder of the economic independence of Uganda. Field Marshal Amin, a year ago your army seemed to have been destroyed by the Tanzanians in Uganda. You disappeared. Now, why did your army do so badly? What happened? Uh, I would say that uh, my army, Air Force and the Marine were not destroyed by the Tanzania. Uh, I am trained military officer by British and in uh, military tactics you can either fight the war or if you think you will win later, you can tactically withdraw your force to the safe place and then until you might make a counter in the future. The Tanzanians went round saying that you had run away. I never ran away and they never fought battle against Uganda. And I will say that uh, they have not even made any resistance in Uganda because my plan that uh, as a founder member and as a founder of the economic uh, independent in Uganda, it would be very shame if I am to destroy my own town, capital city. The found all capital city is full and they found ginger, it is full. And therefore, I directed my officers and the men of the Uganda Armed Forces not to harm anybody, not to steal, not to destroy any industry 
or any building, and we never so we withdraw safely. You talked about saving Uganda. Yes. You say you're not interested in power, but do you think that you're the man who can save Uganda? I can. If Ugandans want me, I will. You know what Aboti said last week? I heard him say it. He said that Idi Amin Dada should be brought back to Uganda in chains. That's what he said at that rally. Yes, but uh, he knows that I am very popular. Obote is uh, against any leader popular in Uganda because he is unpopular. That is why he is to give instruction with Nyerere to deport, to arrest Lule, to arrest Binaisa. I want Binaisa must be set free immediately and so that he can compete with Obote. I want a people like uh, Lule must be returned back to Uganda. They, they can contribute a lot with their professional, like uh, Binaisa is a trained lawyer. But should Big Daddy go back to Uganda in the near future? Would he like to? For me, yes. Uh, if the people of Uganda wants me, I will go back to Uganda and I am sure I will contribute more for the people of Uganda, but not, I am not power thirsty. I wanted to help and rescue the innocent, poor Ugandans. What about all your supporters, your officials you left behind? There are 3,000 who've been in prison in Kampala for over a year. What are your feelings about them? I will rescue them. I will do everything possible with the support of Uganda if they wanted to be free, if they wanted Uganda to be called as a pill of Africa, as was said by uh, Sir, late Sir Winston Churchill, and uh, Uganda will be. One of your great friends, Bob Astles, Major Bob, is under a murder charge at the moment. What, are your, what about Major Bob? Uh, I think they can say, as I wanted it to inform you, that Major Bob is innocent. He's been helping the poor Ugandans. He's not, he, he has not killed anybody, what I know. Bob Astor was trying to help everyone poor. And those whom he helped, I'm sure they can also speak for themselves. And uh, I am sure and the confidence that God will help Bob. And uh, with the blessing of God, Bob will be out of the prison. After the liberation of Kampala, three days after it, I went to the State Research Bureau. Yes. I walked down the basement. The basement was choked with bodies, corpses, shot. There was blood all over the floor. I think those people were, had been held in the State Research Bureau. Who, who could they have been? After the capture of Kampala, they brought body and put there in the State Research. They looked Nobody like... would know because uh, I, I will tell you that they found army. I withdrew the army before. I kept the army only. Uh, engaging the enemy outside the Kampala. What about the murder of those... There were four journalists murdered about ten days before the fall of Kampala, Europeans who came in from Kenya. I mean, what about that? I don't know at all. And uh, first time for me to hear from you, I don't know about them at all. Well, another, another alleged crime involving the State Research Bureau was said to be... Mrs. Dora Block, you know, the Israeli commando raid on Entebbe, they dug up her bones in the forest on the road to Ginger after liberation. I don't know. I can't be Amin in Kampala or in Entebbe, and the same Amin is in, is in Mauritius, uh, outgoing current chairman of the Organization of African Unity 1976, and handing over and when I came back, it was, uh, that is the time, arriving 
and uh, that is the time was the Israeli raid, and how can I be responsible? I know nothing about it completely, because uh, as far as I know, I know nothing about Dora Block. If you went back yourself, isn't there a very strong chance that somebody might try and kill you? Assassination? I mean, you've survived half a dozen assassination attempts. I am not a person who is afraid of being assassinated because I believe in God and I know exactly when and how I will die and uh, this is secret and that is why you find that uh, I was the last man to withdraw from the battlefield and this is according to the military uh, history. The commander of the battle is the last man to withdraw, and I, I perform my duty as a commander. Well, how did you get out of Uganda? How I got it? I got it through my tactics. I can't tell you, but uh, very bravely, and uh, addressing everywhere, chaired by this population, because I was not overthrown. I was forced out of Uganda by the invading force who are six times bigger than my army. And therefore, I cannot put my army to commit suicide. You seem to set great store by your British Army background still. It sounds as if the British Army codebook and so forth worked last year. I'm very proud about the British because I am a trained officer in uh, British Army, in war ministers, and I've uh, been also to Kambale Staff College with the uh, most top British high-ranking who actually fought very bravely, uh, highly, uh, hero of 1945 Second World War. And therefore, uh, I use British tactics, and I love the British very much. And I think... Uh, uh, any misunderstanding between me and the British is uh, uh, you, the journalists, because journalists can uh, uh, bring you up nicely in the world and the journalists can destroy you. And uh, therefore, the image of me and uh, the uh, friend, friendship between me and the British was destroyed by the journalists. The bluster, the bombast of the same Big Daddy who oppressed Uganda for eight appalling years. But whatever his threat or his wish to become some sort of power broker in the continuing Uganda crisis, he is a spent force. His army is in tatters around Uganda's borders. He's humoured here, pampered, but he lacks credibility even among his longest suffering allies, the Arabs. This is Brian Barron at Big Daddy's secret refuge.